Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at the general principles of sound, specifically three terms, amplitude, frequency, and timbre. And the great thing about talking about sound in this way is it can, I can be referring to sound in the analog domain, me talking in the air right now, or in the digital domain when that sound has been converted into a stream of ones and zeros that the computer um, can understand. Most of these terms and most of the, the issues will be the same in both, except one thing. In the digital domain, in the computer, there's an absolute maximum value. We call it 0 dBFS, full scale. And if I try to go above that, I'm going to get horrible clipping distortion. And the result of that is the timbre of the sound will change drastically. And we'll use, we'll use that as a way to kind of explore amplitude, frequency, and timbre. First, we'll look at the oscillator section of our synthesizer and then move on to some of the other general principles of sound. To use the synthesizer, the first thing I'm going to do is turn it on with the speaker icon, and then I can turn on a note. Um, and we're not hearing anything because the amplifier is all the way down. If I start increasing the ampl amplitude, um, you will start to hear it. So we see as I increase the amplitude, um, using the amplifier here, um, we see lights light up on our level meter. And this level meter is the same kind of level meter you see on every track in your digital audio workstation. Um, and the strange thing about this is that absolute max is actually labeled at zero decibels, zero dB. So zero dB is your absolute maximum, and it's actually zero decibels full scale. Um, you can't get louder than that in the, in the digital domain. And we want to be very careful when we're mixing to not exceed that. And then below that is measured in negative decibels. So right now, with this all the way down, we're at negative infinity decibels. So the decibels on uh, zero decibel on in digital audio um, using this meter here is going to be from negative infinity up to zero. You're going to find lots of things in the DAW like compressor thresholds that also go from zero down in the negative range. The next meet, uh, display we're looking at here is our oscilloscope display, which really is the same thing as your waveform view in the um, DAW, except this is really, really zoomed in. We're zoomed in very close. In fact, the entire width of this is going to be showing four milliseconds of time, and a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. Um, so right now, I'm going to be I'm playing a tone that's at 500 hertz, which means that whatever waveform it is, it is a sine wave, that sine wave is going to repeat 500 times each second. Since we're looking at four thousandths of a second, we're going to see two complete waveforms in this display. And let's see that. Now, no matter what the amplitude, we still just see two complete waveforms. If I'm to change the frequency, let's see what happens. I'm going down in frequency. I actually just went down an octave. I went from 500 hertz down to 250 hertz. So when I halved, I cut in half the frequency, I went down an octave. And we notice that as I change frequency, this display uh, oscilloscope kind of scrunches up and stretches out, right? Um, a higher frequency, there's going to be more of those waveforms in that specific amount of time. A lower frequency, there's going to be less. If I double the frequency, I'm going up an octave. I'm saying I have, I'm playing twice as many of those waveforms per second. If I half the frequency, I'm going down an octave. Now, notice that as I change frequency, it doesn't affect amplitude. As I change amplitude, it doesn't affect frequency. So there's a limited range of frequencies humans can hear, and that general range is considered to be 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. We can also say it's 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. A kilohertz uh, is 1,000 hertz. Um, and let's hear, I'm just going to sweep the frequency over that range. And um, really, uh, so I'll start at 20,000. And I'll sweep down from there. And honestly, you're not going to hear it at 20,000. It, it really is beyond human hearing. But it's just a round number. That's what we use. So we're going to see, as I brought the amplitude up, that this display just can't keep up. So it doesn't look like a sine wave, but it actually is. It's just that the display can't keep up. It's also beyond this notch that I'm making at 20,000 hertz is beyond the limits of the spectrum display here. But I'm going to start reducing this. 19,000. I'm going to start to hear it around now. Then as I get lower, it's going to get more and more obvious. Our oscilloscope starting to catch up. You 
use the little stops in the sweep. I'm doing this with the mouse. Now, when we get down to 20 hertz, I'll just bring the volume down. We get down to 20 hertz, it actually ends up sounding more like a rhythm. If you really turn up the speakers, you have some good subwoofers, you'll just hear like a, a thump, a really fast thumping. So 20 hertz is kind of on that verge between rhythm and tone, which is kind of an interesting transition. Now, we said earlier that you really want to avoid going above that 0 dB full scale. Let's actually see what happens if we do go above that. I'm going to put my frequency back at 500 hertz. And I'm just going to bring up this volume. Let's see what happens. So we hear a sine wave. What if I keep going though? We see that we have a single peak in the spectrum display. Um, the spectrum display, I just turned down the output gain so I can talk for a second. The spectrum display is going to show frequency on the x-axis and amplitude on the Y. So before we're seeing time on the X axis, now we're seeing frequency, and we see that a sine wave has energy at a single frequency. And this is going to be 500 Hertz here. Now let's see what happens um, to the oscilloscope display and the spectrum display when we go above zero decibel full scale. Interesting. As we go above zero decibel full scale, we see that we get a clipping indicator, meaning we're going above full scale. We're going above digital maximum. I see that the tops and bottoms of my sine wave have been flattened out um, because you can't get above that digital max. So it just flattens it out. The audible result is that it's harsher, more present, more aggressive, more energetic. And then in the spectrum, I actually see that we have energy at multiple places. So uh, where the sine wave, that simple, that simple shape, while the sine wave was energy, energy at a single frequency, a more complex shape, one with straight lines in it, has energy at multiple frequencies. And we're going to see that most natural instruments, actually all natural instruments, are going to have energy at multiple frequencies. This series of peaks that exists, they're partials. Right? So we have this, harm, this fundamental, which is the tone we hear. I could still whistle this as a single pitch. I would still perceive it as 500 hertz, but now the sound has changed, or the timbre has changed. The spectrum has changed. Its series of peaks has changed. And that relationship between the amplitudes of the partials is how we can distinguish, say, an oboe from a piano. Um, it, it's one of the ways, right? There's many other factors, but the timbre change, that relationship between those partials is a very important characteristic. And if I change waves, I get different relationships between those partials. Let's um, hear this. I'll bring up the volume again. So we hear that each waveform has a kind of a characteristic sound. And it has a characteristic relationship between the partials. I can put on the sawtooth, which will have a partial at every harmonic. Now we want to make the distinction between harmonic and partial. It's actually a very important distinction. The partials are the actual peaks we see. A harmonic or the harmonics are an idealized version of those peaks. So in a natural instrument, the tendency is for each peak to be a multiple of that fundamental frequency. That's my sawtooth. We see energy here, 500, also at 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. There's a peak at every multiple of that fundamental frequency, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. Square doesn't quite have that. Let's see the difference. Reduce the output. With square, it's missing the even ones. So we go from 500, we skip 1,000 and go to 1,500. So these actual peaks are the partials. The exact multiple series is the harmonic series. Often the two terms get interchanged and kind of misused and used, used the same way, but there really is a distinction between harmonics and partials. 
and that relationship between those partials, between the amplitudes of the partials, um, is what we how we can distinguish between different instruments. It's what we know as timbre. And later we'll talk about the filter, whose whole job is to change those relationships to shape that spectrum. All right.